Welcome back, friends. Always a delight to get into God's Word with you. And if we, if we haven't yet met, my name is Doug, and we take time and reflect back on Sunday. So a couple weeks ago, we started a series talking about joy. We're going to get to peace next week. But we've looked at the book of Philippians, and I want to take you today to one of my favorite paragraphs in Philippians, or well, at least my favorite paragraph in chapter one of Philippians. And I want to talk about being an overcomer. And this passage shows us how Paul thinks. And you probably know this, but ultimately we are a byproduct of our thought life. And so when God changes us, he doesn't just change our heart and take out sin. He actually transforms our mind. And so the Bible talks about the renewing of our mind. And so we think differently, and so therefore we act differently. And so here's Paul, and we've talked about the fact that he's incarcerated. He's waiting uh, for the outcome of a trial that ultimately will determine whether he lives or dies. So there could be tremendous stress on him. He was um, unfairly uh, judged and arrested in the first place. Uh, they claim he is going to uh, lead an uprising against Rome. He was never doing that. And so he gets incarcerated. He put, gets put on a ship. He almost dies on the way to Rome. And then he's chained to a Roman soldier. And with all that said, you could say that's a lot of trauma that could turn somebody into a victim. There's a phrase that we use today or culture uses, and that's a victim mentality. Paul could have easily adopted a victim mentality because trauma can have an impact on your thinking and then your thinking starts driving different behavior. But Paul doesn't exhibit that. And I want you to see that in chapter one. This is actually beginning at verse 12. It says, now I want you to know brothers and sisters that what has happened to me, so he's talking about the false accusations. He's talking about the imprisonment. He's talking about the, the imminent trial. What has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard that, and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become more confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. It's true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here in defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, and here's a key line, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains, i.e. make life harder, steal my joy, make me um, act below the potential that God has for me. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motive or true, Christ is preached, and because of that, I rejoice. I wanna just pose the question that maybe you're thinking, who thinks like that? When you read that passage, the answer to the question is a person whose thinking has been transformed. Here's Paul. He used to be persecuting the church. Now he's advancing the church. He used to be against anything that had to do with the name of Jesus. And now he's living exclusively for Jesus. That is a transformed person. And so I want to highlight from this passage, first of all, what he's not doing. He is not verbalizing any language that looks or acts like he's a victim. He's not pointing fingers. He's not blaming people. He's not bitter. He's not angry. He actually has the joy of the Lord in him. And I think he's doing what he talked about in 2 Corinthians where it said this, we demolish every argument and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought and we make it obedient to Christ. Now that's, that's identifying uh, thoughts and labeling them as helpful or hurtful, labeling them as allies or enemies. It's very hard to win a battle against something or someone that you haven't first identified. And so I believe Paul's identified certain ways of thinking that sound like victims instead of overcomers. And he's saying, I'm gonna put the wrecking ball of God's Holy Spirit through that old way of thinking, through that kind of thinking. And he simply says, I'm not going to let it live in me. I'm not gonna let it define me. So he starts by what he's not gonna do. And then certainly there's a side where I wanna encourage us with this. I believe this is not anything to do with how, Paul, how good Paul is, how self-disciplined in his own self he is, how, how righteous or holy he was, I think he's doing what all believers need to do, and that is to trust the Holy Spirit with the heavy lifting. We didn't save ourselves, we don't transform ourselves. There's a great verse 
Paul said it right before he said the paragraph that I read earlier, and I want you to hear this one today. This might be the main reason you're listening today. This is verse six. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work will carry it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. When it comes to us becoming all that God wants us to be, God is committed to us for the long haul. I might feel like giving up. I might feel like I haven't made enough progress. I, at times, I'm gonna get tired. Can I tell you this? The Holy Spirit is never tired of carrying you to completion. He's never thought about giving up on you. He's not gonna give up on you. He is committed to you becoming, changing and becoming everything that God wants you to be. So we trust him with the heavy lifting. Our part is simply really to surrender. Keep reminding ourselves that we need him. Keep telling him we need him. Uh, keep surrounding ourselves with other believers because we're brought into the family of God. Stay committed to his mission because that's all Paul is talking about, really. You know, he's saying that's what matters is that I'm on mission. But the power to do that, the transform thinking to do that, has come about by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of God's word. And so as we surrender to the Lord one more time today, I want you to take courage. The Holy Spirit is lifting you. He's helping you. He's going to move you forward. You're going to become, you're going to do everything God has for you as you stay surrendered to him. So let's pray about that today. Jesus, thank you that we can have joy um, in spite of our circumstances. I thank you for the transforming power of the Holy Spirit where we don't have to be the same. The world might have pushed us down, but we don't have to think like people have been pushed down when you raise us up, when you cause us to be overcomers. So I pray that we would identify thinking that needs to change, thinking that needs to be brought into obedience to Christ. I pray we'll have some arguments with ourselves, with our thoughts that don't reflect Jesus today. And then I pray that we would truly just rest in the goodness of your faithfulness, that you're carrying us, that you're moving us forward, that you're doing the heavy lifting in our lives. We're gonna trust you, Jesus, for all the transforming work, no matter how long it takes, the immediate things and the long-term things that you're gonna change, we're trusting you for that. I commit my friends to you and all that you're doing in their lives in Jesus' name, amen.